Hey, it's Eve for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to work decreases at the edge of a flat panel on your Addy Pro or Addy King size knitting machine. So let's get started. So first of all, let me show you what a decrease is. Here I have a little swatch that I've knit up of some decreases on my Addy. And what a decrease is, is you're just basically decreasing the number of stitches. So if you want to make something with a slanted edge, if you want to make a gradual um, taper, so just basically any time you want to reduce the width of your panel and get either a sharp or a gradual slant at the edge of your panel to create the shape that you want, that's when you use a decrease. So in, um, in hand knitting, we would call these decreases something like a knit two together or an SSK, which is um, a slip slip knit. And what that differentiates between is you want, uh, sometimes you want your decrease to slant towards the left, like I do on this side, all my decreases are slanting to the left. And on this side, all my decreases are slanting to the right. So because um, on the Addy, there's not like a dozen different ways to get to accomplish the same type of decrease, I'm just going to refer to them as left-leaning decreases and right-leaning decreases. And you can use, if you want, you can use a left-leaning decrease on the left side and it will give you a different look. And use a right-leaning decrease on the right side and it will give you a different look than what I have here. But what I have right here is I have on the right side of my panel, I have my decreases leaning to the left because that's the way it's slanting. And on the left side, I have my decreases leaning to the right. So what I've got here is down in this section from about here down, I have a decrease on every fourth row. And then from here up to here, I have it on every other row. And that creates a uh, more of um, a slant. It creates a sharper slant. Um, you can space your decreases out as many rows in between as you want and it will give you a different shape. So just you can just play around with that. But what I've got here is a uh, column of decreases on each side of my little panel. And then I just knit a little bit of straight to have, you know, a little extra at the top so that it wouldn't unravel because I'm not binding this off. Now one more thing I do want to show you here is that this right here, this column of stitches, that runs up the side of my panel and has it on the other side too. It's just whenever you do um, decreases, as long as you're working, left-leaning decreases on the right edge and right-leaning decreases on the left edge, you will always have this column of stitches that is, um, it gives it a much more uh, polished and um, neat look than if you were using, say, right-leaning decreases on the right side, you would still get the same type of slant, but it just refers to the order in which the stitches are stacked. So what I've got here is if these are my two stitches, then with a uh, left-leaning decrease, the one on the right goes on top of the one that's on the left. With a right-leaning decrease, right, like on this side, the one that's on the left goes on top of the one on the right so that it tilts to the right. And when I do this, because we want this column of stitches to be visible because it gives it a neater look, I always have this one edge stitch, the stitch on the very edge. That is not included in the decrease. We have our edge stitch first, then the decrease. And that's something you usually do in hand knitting as well, so that you can use that edge stitch to seam with mattress stitch and you can still see this neat line of decreases going up your project. So now we'll switch over to the Addy and I will show you how you can do this. So here's my Addy and I'm gonna start by casting on for a flat panel. I'm in flat panel mode, which is also called plain knitting. So this little switch down here is up and I'm going to cast on like you would for any flat panel just because this is a sample. Now, if you were using this in a project, depending on the type of project, you might want to use a uh, 
permanent type cast on, like an E-Wrap or a long tail. I have videos on those. And that will give you a permanent edge. This is just a sample for showing you how to work a decrease. So I'm not worrying about the cast on right now. As always, I like to rotate my Addy just a little bit so that this uh, handle is at a more comfortable turning angle for my hand. And I'm just gonna start knitting a few rows to get started. But you will go ahead and do whatever your project requires. Um, it may be something that you are making up or you may be following a tutorial or a pattern or whatever. And uh, just do whatever your pattern calls for. I'm just gonna knit a few rows to just have a little bit of fabric coming off the machine so that I can show you how to do this a little easier. I'm just gonna tug on my cast on tail just a tiny bit to straighten out that cast on edge just so that you can see what I'm doing a little better and so that it will pull the, uh, the knitted fabric down so that it will even out my stitches just so that you can see it better. You don't have to do that for your project. So I'm gonna start here on this edge and this edge when the panel is facing you is actually the right edge because um, right now the uh, main part of the panel is facing away from me, but if it was turned towards me like this, this is the right edge of my panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the yarn out of the yarn guide because I'm about to work a left-leaning decrease. Now again, a left-leaning decrease means that out of your two stitches, the right one is stacked on top of the left one, like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a loom pick. This is essential for your Addy if you want to manipulate stitches at all. This is super, super handy and they are very cheap. So if you don't have one of these, you really need to get one. So take your loom pick and as this first needle comes up, you want to just make sure that your uh, yarn is not in the yarn guide because it will get all tangled up in your needles as you back up. So as we start turning around to go back the other way across this row, we're gonna pick up the stitch off of that very first needle. That is our edge stitch, okay? So we're gonna hang on to that. We're gonna pick up the stitch off of the next needle and off of the needle after it. So I'm doing a decrease that involves two stitches where I'm um, I'm eliminating one stitch and stacking it on top of another one or stacking it underneath the other one. It doesn't really matter which way you want to look at it. But if you want, you can also do what's called a double decrease where you eliminate two stitches by taking one stitch and stacking it on top of two. So basically you're stacking three stitches together to eliminate two stitches. I'm just going to show you today how to do a single decrease which eliminates one stitch by stacking two stitches on top of each other onto one needle. So here is the edge of my panel here. We have one edge stitch and two stitches to work the decrease. So with a left leaning decrease, just use your fingers to help you remember this, if you want your decrease to lean to the left, then you're going to take the right stitch and stack it on top of the left one. So if you want your decrease to lean to the right, you're going to take the left stitch and stack it on top of the right one. So you can just use your fingers to visualize which way you want your decrease to lean. I want mine because this is on the right edge to lean to the left. So I'm going to take the stitch on the right and stack it on top of the stitch on the left. So because we're not using this edge stitch at all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the stitch in the middle and we're gonna put it on this first empty needle closest to the last stitch that's still attached. We're gonna stack the one in the middle, which is the one on the right, on top. So we're going to put it onto the needle first. So what I'm gonna do is take this stitch right here and hold it with my fingers. I'm gonna take the one in the middle put it on top of the needle, over the hook, and down so that it falls into the needle. 
So that right stitch has gone down first. So if the, uh, if the fabric was right side up facing us, we can't really see the right side right now because it's on the machine. But when it comes off the machine, you'll be able to see that when it's right side up, this first stitch that we're putting down onto the needle first is what's going to be on top. So I want this stitch on the right to be on top of the stitch on the left. So I'm going to put it down over the needle first. Then I'm going to put the stitch on the left on top of the needle. That is our decrease. And then I'm going to take the stitch that we held for the edge and put it on the needle next to the one that we just put our decrease on. And now you can see we've eliminated a stitch because there's an empty needle here that we originally had a stitch on. So you're just going to pop those stitches down to the bottom of the needles. You want to bring your yarn under the red tab that's next to this edge stitch and back into the yarn guide. And you can just knit across your row now. So I'm going to show you how to do them every other row. If you want to put more rows in between, you can do as many rows in between as you want. But now I'm going to show you on the left edge how to do a right leaning decrease. So what we're going to do is we've knit across that row and as we turn to go back, we're going to take the yarn out of the yarn guide again and move it out of the way. And as that first edge stitch comes up, we're going to pick it up with our loom pick, take it off of the needle. Then we're going to pick up the next stitch, right after that edge stitch, and the stitch after it, which is the third stitch. So here we have our three stitches again. We have an edge stitch over here, we have a stitch in the middle, and a stitch on the other side. That's closest, it's attached to the rest of the panel down here. So because we're doing the left edge, we want the right leaning decrease. So we want the left stitch to cross on top of or stack on top of the one on the right. So regardless of which way you're slanting and which edge of the panel you're on, just always remember that the edge stitch stays on the edge, the one in the middle goes down first, and then the one that's attached to the rest of the panel goes down on top of the one in the middle. So again, I'm going to take the one that is attached to the panel, it happens to be the one on the right, and hold it. Now I'm going to take the one in the middle, the one in the middle always goes down onto the needle first, then the one that is closest to the rest of the panel, and then the edge stitch goes on to its needle last and it goes onto its own needle. So then again we're going to pop it down to the base of the needles, bring the working yarn under the red tab, and back into the yarn guide to knit back the other way. So let me show you that one more time and try to explain it in a little different way because you know different people understand things in different ways because people learn differently. So I'm going to show you another uh, explanation for this. Maybe it might be a little bit easier. So again, as we come back towards the edge of our panel, um, if you don't want to have to remember which type of decrease goes on which panel, if you don't want to have to remember what it's called, or you know if it's right leaning or left leaning, you can look and see if it's right leaning or left leaning. But just remember, that as your edge stitch comes up, you're going to take it off and hold it. You're going to take off the second stitch and the third stitch. You're always going to take off those three stitches. Now, if you want to take off two edge stitches and have, you know, two stitches on that edge before your decrease, go right ahead. But I'm just going to show you right now with the one edge stitch. If you do two edge stitches, then just count, you've got two stitches for the edge stitches, and then you've got, you would pick up a fourth stitch, so that you still have two for your decrease, and then two for your edge stitch. But I'm just going to do the uh, single edge stitch here, and regardless of what side of the panel, which 
direction that you want it to lean, even if you don't know which direction it's supposed to lean, you're always going to have the edge stitch on its own needle. The stitch in the middle is going to go on its needle first, then the stitch that's closest to the rest of the panel, and then the third and final stitch to go on is that edge stitch which goes on its own needle. Again, if you have two edge stitches, then you will put both edge stitches on their own needles. And we push it down, bring the yarn under this red tab over here by the edge to make sure that it gets caught in the edge stitch, and we can knit across our row. You can also work decreases at the end of the row if you want, but just always remember that the stitch in the middle goes down first, the stitch closest to the panel goes down second, and then the edge stitch always goes down on its own needle. So you can go ahead and play around with decreases and uh, figure out what type of shapes that you want to make for your project and how many uh, rows between your decreases that you will need for that and etc. You don't have to work them on both your edges. You can uh, work decreases on only one edge or the other edge or both. But just one thing I want to mention is that you cannot work decreases on the inside of the panel. The decreases can only go on the edges because of the nature of this machine. In hand knitting, when you work your, uh, your stitches, your stitches are just all on a needle. If my finger is the needle, you just have stitches lined up on the needle. And you can push and pull them apart, you know, as much as you want, because they're all on that needle. You can scrunch them together, you can spread them out, whatever you want. So because of that, you know, because those stitches can move back and forth on the needle, you can work decreases in the middle of a row because when you shrink the length of that row, the stitches just move on the needle to compensate. Whereas on the machine, you have a separate needle for every stitch. So if you were to work a decrease in the middle of the row, you would have to pick up every single stitch all the way up to your decrease, work your decrease, and then put all those stitches back on the needle. I won't say it's impossible, but I don't recommend it. It's best to work your decreases on the edge if you want to have a piece with decreases in the middle, I would recommend doing two separate flat panels, work your decreases on one edge of the one flat panel and then sew them together with mattress stitch and you will have an invisible seam there but you will also have a clean line of decreases that um, you don't have to pick up half of a row and put the half of a row back on every time you need to work. So give this a try and uh, Tell me what kind of projects you would use this in. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, I would love to hear about how this turns out for you. Um, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see projects that involve this technique. And if this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. And if you use this in a project, I would not only love to hear about it in the comments, but I would also love it if you could go over to my Facebook page and send me a little picture so I can see, you know, what you do with this technique. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you use this technique in a project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Facebook and Pinterest. Just see the links in the description box. Thanks for watching. Bye.